It's a God that is, sits in his auspicious glory. Who don't need people to vote him in or out. He's not subjected to anyone. He said that you are accepted in this beloved relationship. It doesn't matter if you're thin, you're short, you're tall, you're fat, who like you, what tribe you belong. You are accepted in the beloved. That is an assurance that God has been having with me is scattered through scripture and I wish you can just follow the preacher for these few moments where I can connect a few passages it's a bit difficult in my mind but I hope as I speak that God will give me clarity because as a preacher when I approach the lectern to preach it is difficult because all I have to express an infinite God is finite words and how do I fit God infinity? And so I start speaking with a disadvantage and then my accent.
stand still and see salvation. Well, the Hebrew word for salvation is Joshua or yod heh vav -He, Those letters in the Hebrew. In other words, you were saying, I want you to, not, to see me deliver salvation because salvation is an experience. He's drawing a picture of his son that they can see. Because you see, the Bible, there is a continuity of scripture. It is not a new thing. It is it's an unfolding of God. In one time, you will see him in a garden as an animal kill, and you don't know what his name. But as you move on, you will see it was indeed a lamb. And as you move on, you will see, hey, here comes Jesus. He's the lamb of God. He's the prince of peace. He is he is the I am. This, because the Bible is a progressive word. It just continues to unfold what God has spoken in the beginning because the end is in the beginning. Are you with me, church? I'm going somewhere. Just follow me. No, no, no. He parted the Red Sea. And, 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 and the Bible says, and the children of Israel, <laughs> the children of Israel went through the Red Sea on dry ground. Now, now, it would have been sufficient for me to walk through the Red Sea with a little mud because it had water. But God has a way of when he does something, he does it good. He said, I wouldn't make you walk in mud. They said, in dry ground. They walked through on dry ground. Mm, they march on dry ground through because when God is doing something, he don't mess up your feet. He say, walk through dry ground. Now, I want to show another imagery now. Now, now watch me. When the church, the children of Israel, was going to Jordan, that they were to go into Canaan, which represents salvation. Now, here's the image being coming together. This is how the Bible says, line upon line, precept upon precept, text upon decks. When they were going in Jordan, Jordan, a body of water, was overflowing his bank. And God told the priest with the ark on their shoulder, he said, you know what I want you to do first? I told Moses to raise his hand. And his hands represent a nail in the hand. But I want to complete the picture of salvation. So he told the priest, I want you to, st oh God, I want you, I want you to step now. Now the feet of Jesus is coming into play. With Moses, with Moses, I express the hands of God outstretched. But with Joshua, I want to show the feet now. Mm? When they put the feet in the water, then it parted imagery. Salvation is a God that is outstretched embracing all. Amen. S switch off those Nigerian movies and start reading this book. It is a sweet book. The word of God is still good. When a Jewish child will be introduced to what we call Beth Sefer in the Hebrew, the house of book. When they began to read the word of God, the rabbis will put honey on the word of God and then let the child lick it and then he will say, may the word of God be honey to you. Because this word is living word. And if we'll spend more time in this book, we'll not get in as much trouble. Are you with me, church? So now, the children of Israel has come through on the other side of the Red Sea. And we know what happened with Mary. Miriam begins to dance and sing, and she wrote the song of Moses and the Lamb. Then as they begin to walk through the wilderness, hear me, church, I'm pivoting on my message. As they begin to walk through the wilderness, the children of Israel who had seen God deliver them through the plagues, they were delivered. Blood upon the doorpost, they were delivered. They were delivered from Pharaoh. They borrowed money. They had a lot of wealth. <laughs> Remember I told you that, that, that Egypt represents the womb. Well, well, let me tell you something. Let me share something with the church. When a woman gave birth, her umbil umbilical cord and that afterbirth, it has a tremendous amount of stem cells. The cells, the cells people are using it, stem cells, to do all kinds of things. Let me tell you what that meant. Even though they didn't know what it meant then, when, is when Egypt spit out the church and spit out Israel, that wealth that they gathered, that they had for the tabernacle, even in the sea, as those chariots were drawn, 
represents that. Now they're on the banks of that Red Sea. Now they're moving on. They have seen God deliver them. They have seen God give them money. They have seen God bless them. And yet when there is a little trouble, they will exclaim, is God among us? Mm? Do you know how you insult your God? God has blessed you. Send your child to Nairobi University. Send your child to Stratford. Bring you through from Kisitong and bring you Nairobi. Bless you with business. And any trouble you face, you ask, is God among us or not? God has blessed you with bread and blessed you with manna. Give you clothes to wear with a good education. And any trouble we go through, is God here? Just a little bit, a lack of water. And instead of they go back in their resume and read your resume, how God have brought you forth in the past, you're looking to wonder and begin to murmur. Now hear me, church. Last night I talked about bad speech. Murmuring in church is bad speech. And the Bible says, watch me. Exodus chapter 17. I'm preaching from three chapters. I'm disobeying homiletic rules, but... Jesus was a rule breaker anyway. I don't subscribe because men create homiletics. And um, I, I'm not reading the text really, but you can keep it there for now. But hear me, church. <laughs> In Exodus 17, now they came out and uh, they are not referred them. And, 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 and there is no water to drink. So the scriptures say they began to chide Moses. <laughs> The people, because there is no water in the church, there is no water here, there is no this, and they begin to chide Moses. But Moses was skillful enough to know that anytime he's being chided by the people, he needs to, to move on and go up. He begins to cry to God and say, these people are chiding me. Now watch this. I don't want to preach from the text. I want you to read it. But the Bible says, these chapters, these verses are more pertinent now than then. We have to glean the truth from it and apply to our ourselves. Are you with me, church? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Moses, Moses was being chided by the people, and then God says, you must, you come before the people. Then eventually Moses went up on the mountain and left Joshua. Here's what I want to say. Moses struck the rock, and water came out for the congregation to drink, in spite of the murmuring. But let me say this here. There's a point, it's a pivotal point in my message. When they began to chide Moses, when they begin to chide Moses, the Bible says, I think, 17 verse 8, then cometh Amalek. I want to preach about Amalek. <laughs> then cometh Amalek. Amalek came to kill them because of murmuring. We preach that this age is the real age. But when it happens, what is this? Go to the scripture and you will see everything is written. Solomon said, there is nothing new under the sun. Read this book. Then cometh Amalek. And Amalek begin to kill the people of God. Many of the weak ones in the church were killed and murmured. And then he allowed Joshua to fight. And he said in his word, remember, he said, I will make war with Amalek from generation to generation. In every generation in this church, we will find an Amalek when people are finding themselves murmuring. This word of God will come against anybody because the word of God is no respecter of person. If there is murmuring against Moses, there will be Amalek. And Amalek is a killer. He says to us, remember Amalek, what he did to you, by the way. Are you with me? Just follow me. I'm going somewhere. Make sure and put some deacons by the door so nobody run out. <clears throat> no, sometimes when the word gets heavy, people go, ah. nah, nah. I, I, I'm pivoting. Then came Amalek and fought against. I want to pivot on Amalek. Now hear me. Here's where I'm going a little deeper in the word. So I need you to follow me carefully now. Listen to me. 
Amalek. I am really preaching from Esther. It's Esther is where I'm going. But I'm starting here to go there. So I'll bridge it in a while. So I want to explain a Hebrew concept, then transition. Now, now. When I explain salvation just now, I want to add another word to explaining salvation. yod heh vav heh for God fighting. is the Hebrew word for laughter. Laughter is the same word where you get the word Isaac. You remember Sarah laughed? Laughter in the Hebrew is when you put two things together, juxtapose them together, and then there is a twist. There is a sudden change of events. Watch me, watch me. So Sarah, the Bible says her womb was shriveled up. The word used is shriveled. She, 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 there was no way that Sarah could have given birth. And because there was no way for her to give birth, when God steps in, that is called laughter. In other words, when there was a sudden change, a, a twist, a, a change of events. So in salvation, the children of Israel was boxed in by walls, mountains, and both sides, and seen in front, and suddenly <clears throat> delivered. Suddenly a twist. That is laughter from the Bible. Now let me explain this. Are you with me? You will see what I mean. So watch me, church. What God does <laughs> in the church life, what God does in your life personally is to set the devil up to laugh. He said, he make it look like, that is why the scripture have so much text that say, and at midnight, hmm, when Jesus was on the mountain and his disciples were in the sea and the sea was rough, the text says, and it was dark. And Jesus had not come. It used a blue perfect tense. In other words, it can't get any darker. It was dark and it couldn't get any darker. And then here comes Jesus. This is a job for Jesus. When he comes, when the situation looks like. When Lazarus was dead for four days and this, everybody was mourning. Then here comes Jesus to twist. To cause laughter in the heavens. So God has a tendency of setting your life up. Let your enemy laugh at you. Let them laugh at church. Let them criticize us. Yet God will. He will come in and make a difference in this place. That's divine laughter. God is at work. He says he laughs in the heaven. And he who laughs last. Have the best laugh. God is a laughing God. He sets the enemy up. Watch me. I want to make a point here. <laughs> when the children of Egypt, Pharaoh and his chosen chariots was pursuing Israel, was pursuing the church, God was setting them up for death. Let me make this point. When you see your enemies pursuing you, it's a setup for the destruction. Let them come behind you. In fact, when you see them, you should glad because you know there is a hole God is setting for them, my friend. They will drown in the sea. And he said, these enemies... Oh, I want to preach to a real church that can make some noise. Let me talk to this side. These enemies we shall see no more. So when in work, on your job, and the people in, in the work is fighting against you, I know somebody who knows that well. You enjoy them. And I find this church should be a real lively church. Because, oh God, the more enemies you have, the more rejoicing you should have. Because it's a setup. God wants to laugh. It's a laughing God. That is right through scripture. He sets up even the way he died on the cross. When Satan thought he won, twist. <laughs> Laughter. It's a laughing God. So salvation, he set them up and then twist. Change. So some of your life has been a canvas for which God is writing his joke. 
<laughs> you, you, you see what I mean? He, he's a setup. He, he's writing. So when we are going through hardship, we should, this church should be a raucous church. I'm, I'm not saying irreverent, but you know what I mean. It, 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 it's like, because you see, so much of us come in unhappy. But if you see unhappiness, if you see your situation differently, you will understand that the worse it looks, it better it will be. Laughter. So he said, I want you to remember Amalek. Now, so I want to now join the issue of laughter and how we twist to Amalek. Now, watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Amalek. And I remember I tell you I'm preaching from Esther. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Is a word that we get Hamas. Now, 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 Hamas fights Israel. Now, Hamas, there is a theological concept of the of interpretation called the law of first mention. Wherever your thing is first mentioned in scripture, especially if it is mentioned near the beginning, it has a sense of its importance. The first place you ever see. Haman or Haman, that man you see in Esther is in Genesis, but you can't see it in an English Bible or Swahili Bible. So let me read the Hebrew. <laughs> when Adam and Eve sinned and they ate the fruit, are you with me, church? I'm now building another platform for you to start. When they sinned and Jesus showed up, showed up, Walk in the cool and ask question. He said this in the Hebrew. Let me read it in English first. He says, Why hast thou eaten? Who told you not to eat? To eat of the tree. In Hebrew it says, Hamim haraitz. God is speaking Hamim because Haman, Hamas, Hamin has a germ in Genesis that you will see throughout the scripture. Now follow me, I'm building. Now as a preacher, as a scholar of the word, I don't interpret revelation a lot like how we do it. And that is why I don't ever preach about it. Because we pay a lot of attention to the Pope. And if you come, we have to sometimes, that was Uriah Smith. Mm, I know some of you know uncomfortably because you can't deal with... <laughs> You you are a smith and you build everything on the papacy. But when you look in Genesis, there was a Haman, a Hamim, and then Cain got that same spirit. Because in, in Scripture, watch me, watch me. I want to make a next point to bridge the gap for you. In Scripture, in Hebrew, how the Bible was written, God, Trump, f function, Trump's form. So when the Bible says, I am made in his image and likeness, it is not that God has hand and foot. Even though the scripture said that, it only said for us to understand. You can think about it. God is infinite, means not finished. He has no borders. So this imagery is for you to understand something that is beyond comprehension. Are you with me, church? So when it says we are made in his image, it is not talking about head, foot, and hand. It means we should function like God. Are you with me? You should behave like him. He was a speaking God. You speak. He's a loving God. You love. He gave us procreation as husband and wife for us to know what it is to create. In other words, it's my function, not my form. So when we talk about the beast and stuff like that, when you look at Genesis to understand Revelation, he talked about a beast in the field. And I told you, I think while I was preaching, man was created the sixth day. And, and the beast was the sixth day. That is why Revelation talk about the, <laughs> the beast and had number of six. Because it is, it's just talking about Genesis because the scripture is a Jewish book. It is not an English book. It's not a Swahili book. It's a book that if you have to understand it clearly, you must go back to the original. I'm not saying salvation is based on it. I'm saying you will get the sweet nectar of the word. Hmm? So 
So we were made to function like him. Now, let me connect. So where am I? <laughs> Haman, Hamim. Now, so it is not Haman, it's not a person. It's a system. Remember Amalek because Amalek gave birth to Haman. And he, he said, I will make war with Amalek from generation. Now, for those of you who study the Bible, I tell you, switch off those Nigerian movies. When Saul got the opportunity to, he, he said, I want you to kill everything in Amalek. Remember? Because Amalek, remember what Amalek did. Paul Saul saved Amalek. And as a consequence of saving Amalek, because he was the king of the Agatite, Haman in Esther. Now, now, now. There's where I'm bridging. Are you with me? I'm not going to bridge and collapse everything. To show you laughter, twist, and how God's work. So you know the story of Esther. I'm going to just say it briefly and to see God. You know the cast of characters in the story. Esther, her name is Nesta in the Hebrew. It means to hide, to obscure. Even though she was Hadassah, but what she was called, she's been obscure because God has a way of concealing something before he reveals it. So Esther is there. And I, I don't want to take time to tell you that Esther is not necessarily a moral character, but a character that God is using. And even though his, word, his, his, his name is not mentioned in the book, he has his character, Esther. And that book is full of laugh, twist, twist. God is setting up so that he can kill the enemy. So let's talk about the story for a while. So in the book, you know the story. Esther is there. Mordecai is there. And Haman is there from Hamas. Now, now let me just say this. Watch me. Church. I want to beg anybody here who's studying Revelation, stop paying all that attention to the papacy and look at Islam. I can challenge you that Cain, Esau, Amalek, there is, you see, Scripture has a trend, a pattern. And when you understand the pattern, it doesn't matter, you will notice. And right even today, Hamas, there is a movement that we don't pay attention. All our prophetic understanding and all our preachers talk about the papacy and, and we are hooked on. And because we approach scripture as a people that knows, sometimes you can't get more. Are you with me, church? There is no other understanding for which my father taught, my father, father taught. This is it. There's not, and we're not looking. At Esau, a man of the field, just like Cain was a man of the field. Have you ever realized that every man of God was a man who looked at flock? Abel looked at the sheep. Moses was tending sheep when he met his wife. You look at them right through all of them. Were flock. And the opposite, there are only two seeds in the word of God. There's only Cain and Abel. There's only two roads to go. There's only two. We pay so much attention to this Pope. Whether he's a black Pope, he's a thing. And we think and people get frightened. Christ is coming soon. Let me tell you something. When Jesus is in your heart, it doesn't matter what happened. I don't even care about current events in the sense of whether he come yesterday, today, whatever. I am ready. It's sometimes this nervousness and we have preachers that come and scare us and we have revival for a week and then you go back to the same thing. But I have discovered there is a secret when you have met Jesus. <laughs> Jesus transcends events because you have a relationship with your God. Doesn't matter what happened, come hell or high water, I'm sticking with Jesus. So, so let me just see if I can close this thing up and we have a good time. This, this story, twist, laughter, laughter. Let me make the point with this. Oh, look at the time. But anyway, let me just preach on. There's this thing that there was a, 
there was a, a device that was made to catch thieves. And because I'm in Kenya, I wouldn't use you all. <laughs> it was designed to catch thieves. Like this box, catch thieves. So they took it and they put it in Canada. And in two hours, they caught 50 thieves. So what? That is good. I know what some of you are saying. Don't say that. <laughs> 50 thieves. They took it and they bring it in, 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 in Barbados, in an island. In three hours, they caught a hundred thieves. They bring it in my country. And in five minutes, they stole the machine. <laughs> now, hear what makes you laugh. Twist. You're going one way. And then suddenly, there was a change of events. Are you with me? That's true laughter in Hebrew. So I want to tell you, I made the point again, but I want to say it again. God likes to laugh. So what I want to tell central members and people who are here from all over, just allow God to laugh. This whole thing is a setup for God to get the glory because God cannot lose. Don't care how the going gets rough. And people want to kill you and kill my church. You can't. Nobody could. The devil is a defeated foe. Because God has already laughed. This thing is a setup. It's a setup. Go tomorrow in your job and just walk like a mad woman or man and say setup. Setup. Fight me. Yes. Fight me. Tell them to fight. This is a setup. So, 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 so. Esther hidden. In a place where God allow her to be because he wants to deliver his people. And when he wants to deliver, he creates crisis. <laughs> I just wish this church can believe when God is ready to do a great work, he allows crisis. When he was about to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt, plagues crisis. Where they were now making straws with enough um, bricks with enough straws. Now he's about to deliver. You have to make the same bricks with less straws. God is a God that will allow crisis so that he, his delivery could be strong and it will be of God and not of us. Crisis. So yes, I want to deliver the rest of them. Some of them had gone off already. When, when Cyrus built back the temple, but he left some in Babylon. <laughs> he left some in Babylon. And Esther and Mordecai was part of that. And there was a wicked man, Hamin Haritz Haman. Not because he's a person, but because he represents a certain spirit. Just like how Roman says, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hate. It's not that God hate a person. That is what Paul is saying because Paul is a Jewish scholar. He's not thinking like an Englishman. He's not thinking like a modern day Greek scholar who will think, is it that God hate? No, no, no. He's saying the function of Esau. Esau is a killer. Esau wants to hold his brother. Esau wants to consume. That spirit is what I hate. Mm? That is what I'm fighting. He said, I, I, I'm looking for Haman. I want you to remember Amalek. Remember what Amalek did. And God put Esther. Now Esther, I don't want to repeat the whole story. because, But, but Esther, you know, was brought before the king and all that. And she became, God gave her favor. And let me tell you something. Favor is not fear. <laughs> because God will make you come on the 11th hour and still give you the same bread from a man who was working all the time. Because favor is not fair. <laughs> Don't look for fear. And so, some, some people, you see them looking like they're sinning. Looking like they're doing wrong. Look, 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 look. And God just blessing them. You want to know. Don't leave people business alone. Are you with me, church? Let, let me just move on. So, so, so Esther. Esther is there. And Haman. Hate. Mordecai. Now watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Haman is from 
Amalek. Mordecai is a Benjamite. Saul was a Benjamite. And God tells Saul, I want you to destroy Amalek, and he didn't do it. Well, God will raise up another Benjamite right there. This Benjamite refused to bow. Watch me. Watch me. Bow down to Haman. So he was angry. Of course, you know this story. Let me move quick. You know this story. He was angry. So Esther is now queen. He's angry. Mordecai don't want to bow down. Mordecai hears some men plotting to destroy the king. He tell Esther, Esther tells the king, the men are beheaded and killed. You know that in the story. Hmm? So that happens. But the king forgot he didn't reward him. Now Haman is a big guy in the kingdom. He's walking around like a big guy. He comes out of a dinner with the king and sees, sees Mordecai not bowing down. Went home and make a plot. At the same time, Esther goes in and requests the king that I want to have a time with you so we have a banquet. So she has a banquet and of course Haman and the king was there as you know. He felt very good. He went home. He talked to his wife how big he is, and all that. But the next day, there will be another banquet. While he was walking out of the first banquet, he saw Mordecai, very angry, so he built a hangman noose. But it's not like how we think today. It was a thing. They used to impale you, throw you on a big spear. Now watch me, watch me. Coming down to the end. Just follow me to a big spear. So now he's building that for, remember twist. He's building that for, He's building that for Mordecai. Now Esther is in there. The king goes to bed the night and he can't sleep. He can't sleep. So he told the guy, bring the books of the chronicles. Let me just read. How is it possible of all the books that they had of the chronicles that he will pick the very book that was written the story of, of Mordecai that saved his life. Because God is a set up God. He's a twist God. He loves to laugh. So we are the actors in his story. Hmm? No, no, no. Come here. Just, just follow me a bit. So God is setting up this thing. Listen, this gospel makes me feel to dance, but afraid to dance here. But trust me, when I go in my hotel room, I'll be jumping up because I know nobody will be able to. This thing good. This gospel in this book is so sweet. Sweeter than honey than the honeycomb. God, I want to keep making this point. Mothers and fathers, pastors and elders, whoever you are in the listening of my voice, it doesn't matter if your marriage is broken, if your children give in trouble, that's a setup. Even for those who may go in prison, even for those who may go almost in hell, it's a setup because the greater you are, Joseph, in that pit, the more exaltation I will give you. God is a setup God. He's a set-up God. Wherever you make your bed, if you make it in hell, I'll come there and fetch you there. Twist. He will make a joke out of your enemies. It doesn't matter what you see with your eyes. Before I conclude this sermon tonight, I want to tell parents, Manoah, Samson's parents, Last information about their son is that his eyes are plucked out and he's tied to a post. And far as those parents are concerned, Samson is a dead man. But God, 
<laughs> hey, at the last words, they heard from a messenger that Samson's eyes are plucked out. And I told you on Sabbath that the Hebrew word for Samson, 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 is sun. He was bright to shine. And the word Delilah in the Hebrew is the word to pluck out that which shines. So she went to him to pluck his eyes out. But in spite, I want to make an announcement right now to parents and people who have children in trouble that I thank God that hair grows back because when Samson hair grew back he got the strength even in the post in your dying stage what I'm trying to tell you Samson killed <laughs> more people in his death than he did in his life because God is a set up God He's a set up God. He will set your person, your son Manoah, right in the place of the enemy camp because he will get the glory. At the end of the day, God will be glorified. My friends, God will get the glory. I don't care what the devil throw at my church or my people. God will get the glory. Trust me, he will get the glory. The book of Hebrews lets me know that Samson will be in the kingdom by faith. Samson. Mm? So, so. So Esther, so the king got a dream in the night. God is at work. <laughs> at work and he says, hey, by the way, has this man ever been rewarded? At the same time, he's asking, Haman walks in. He said, ah, Haman, tell me, has this man ever been, no, what will you do for a man that you want to honor? <laughs> the man gets high and nice. Now, now, watch me. Church, church, hear me. Please bear with me. I started preaching a little late. You know, when the word gets sweet, I get sweet too. <laughs> you, you know what? But seriously, seriously, <laughs> how, how could God set things up so nice while he thinking the enemy coming into the chamber? He said, what can I do to honor man? And <laughs> he did something that my mother used to do. You know, siblings sometimes are greedy. So when my mother have to share an orange between two of us, my sister and I, she will say to us, you cut it, and the one who cut it must choose last. This side didn't get it. Let me, let me say this. Side. <laughs> you cut, but you choose first. You know how exacting you're trying. You try, you're trying to cut that thing so, to make sure that because she has to choose first. Well, God make him, man. <laughs> Yeah, God make Haman choose the honor. Hmm? He said, you know, king, how you must move is like this. You take your royal robe that you move around with and your royal chariot and horse and your royal stuff and parade this man in the street and tell everybody. He said, well, hey. <laughs> he, he said, okay, go and do everything you say. <laughs> For Mordecai. Twist! So you can imagine him on face. You, you, brother, no, 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 no. Have you ever experienced on your job somebody have, have to honor you who hated you? <laughs> have you, have you, no, no, seriously, have you ever experienced somebody who hates you so much, but they have to honor you now because of God? I, I say, don't fight your own battles. He says, stand still and see salvation, for I, God, will fight for you. And when God fights for you, no man can be against you. Trust me, when God fights, he don't fight fear. He let the enemy cut the slice. And him, now the next day, Mordecai and top the king horse, going through. He came home. Watch me. Watch. He came home. And he, he told his wife, look what happened. <laughs> 
I find this so sweet. This better than any movies. Trust me, soap opera. Bible, best soap opera. <coughs> he come home now telling his wife. The same wife. And if I was preaching to a woman, I'll talk. But the same wife who tell him, build the gallows. No telling him. You see here, man? You see Mordecai? He's a Jew. And tonight for sure, you're dead. <laughs> Next time the Chamberlains came for him. Rush him into the place of the king because there is the next banquet. Comes in, sit down. King said, Esther, what you want? Up to half my kingdom, tell me. He said, this man. <laughs> this man here. Hey man, I'm a Jew. And he has plot to kill all the Jew. Substitute the Jew with the church. There's a plot to kill us. And as a medical person, my first degree is in medical. I want to remember, somebody remind me of the point that I was making there. But let me tell you something, church. Hear me. Of all the diseases I've seen while working in a hospital, doing x-rays and ultrasound and CT and MRI, I've been there. I've done all of that. I've seen disease in many shapes. Go to surgery with the doctors. See them come. One of the worst diseases I see in a hospital is autoimmune disease. When my own body is <laughs> when my own body is fighting against myself, it is one thing to have an enemy from outside, but it's another thing when I have leukemia and my white blood cells is killing my soul. Who do I turn to? When me is fighting me, it is when soldiers kill each other and they say the worst killing in a war is friendly fire. Ouch. Haman wants to kill, but God, God is saying, look, remember Amalek, he wants to kill. He is the real enemy. So, 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 watch. I'm gone. Just watch me, church. You know? He said, up to half of the kingdom. He said, this man, Haman, wants to kill the church. He wants to kill your people. He has made a decree so that all of us will die. On the 13th of the month, Adar. And the king got so vexed, he ran out in his garden. Now, what's another setup? King got vexed, ran out in his garden. And the Bible says, Haman recognized that maybe the king is plotting something for him. So what he does, he runs to plead with Esther. And the mistake he makes is wanting to plead with a man wife, but to go by his bed. You will understand. Let me come on this side. The scripture says, he, when, when the king came back in, he saw him on the bed. <laughs> Read the story. What is now a man mad? Don't mess with my bed, sir. You, 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 you don't do that. Then he saw him. He said, oh, so you want to take Esther? Before the scripture said the word coming out of his mouth, this chamberlain come and put a bag over his head. Huh? Grab him out. Like real Al-Qaeda. And he was impaled. Impaled and killed. Twist. But the real essence of the story as I close my text before you tonight is that where Mordecai was humbled, he was exalted, he was given charge over Haman house. And where Haman was exalted, he was humiliated. Esther, who started off being hidden, now was known as a defender of the Jews. Because God is a fighting God. He's a God that will twist and change. So at the end of the story, they got two days to defend themselves. And they kill Haman's house and destroy everything. And so that text, remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when you will come forth in Egypt. 
we must remember Amalek. Church, I pray that we must not never let the devil use us like Amalek. Because God will come against Amalek. And he will fight against Amalek from generation to generation. Because Amalek is a spirit that wants to kill this body. God has called me for this week to tell this church it is time we kill Amalek and kill a God so that he doesn't infect us. And if you do like Saul and spear a God, he will kill you. So keep no hostages. Could we stand to our feet? Now, now the worst thing to do is to listen to a word and don't act on it. Church, I don't want to tell you to do, but I said something last night, and I'll say it again. If there's any member here or anybody has any issues with each other, I want you to hug some necks. I want you to kiss. I want you to make up. This church is bigger than a little murmuring. And if you vex with me tonight, you better vex with God. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Did the chorister come? Preach. Could you come? Could you just stretch to the next person and hold their hands? Let us just sing that song earnestly bind us together lord bind us together lord could you just sing that song even if it's just the chorus just sing that song. hold that hand and squeeze it mean it please bind us together that song i don't know i can't sing at all let's put this mic on bind us let's together it, lord bind us together that will not be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with love. Just sing it one more time. Bind us together, God. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your way in this church. Have your way, Jesus. Bind us Move together. Up and down in these ads, Jesus. Bind us together. Bind us together. Lord. Bind Just hum it softly. Just hum it softly. Love. Just hum it softly. Close your eyes. Everybody, close your eyes. And say, bind us together. And hum, bind us together. Bind us together, Lord, with cords that cannot be broken. If you are here tonight and you want the courage to say sorry to your wife, sorry to your husband, sorry to a church member that have a that has offended you. That has offended you. Not you did the offense. You was offended. The scriptures say leave your gift at the altar. If you need strength and courage to pick the phone up and say sorry. Just raise your hand. Everybody eyes closed. If you need strength, just put it up please. This is about Jesus. Don't, don't let no member stop you. If you need the courage I'll pray and God will give you the courage and you'll find a release. You can put your hands down. Bind us together, Lord, with cords that cannot be broken. Father in heaven, your word has been spoken. I leave the consequence of your word to you. 
You are the author and finisher of our faith. You are in charge of this church. You are the chief executive officer. You are the pastor, the priest, and the God of this church. Therefore, Lord, all we do tonight is to surrender to your cutting and your healing. But, oh Lord, we are tired of autoimmune disease. We want to be made whole. Because the great physician is here. There is a balm in Gilead. There is a physician here. Oh Lord, may we prostrate ourselves before you tonight so that we could get healing. I thank you, oh God, for what you have done tonight. You have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Could the church say amen? amen? Could you say hallelujah? hallelujah? Could you shake some hand and hug some necks and kiss as we continue in the Lord Jesus Christ? So Amo and Women Ministry are planning to have a joint breakfast this coming Sunday. So please prepare yourself. We'll give you the details in due course. I'd like to invite the head elder for uh, some final kind of announcements before you dismiss. Have a good evening and God bless you. Tomorrow at a quarter past five, elders, please, in the singing room there, be there before the program starts here. We started today, and we are not going backward. May God bless you all. <laughs>